About 20 years ago, I learned a guitar exercise that completely changed my life, and it's something that I continue to use to this day. And not only am I gonna share it with you, but I'm gonna talk in detail on all the benefits that it can give you for both your fretting and your picking hand. Just be sure to stick around till the end of the lesson because I've got a free gift for you and your guitar that you're gonna love. Okay, so what's all the hubbub about this life-changing guitar exercise? Well, this is something that you may be somewhat familiar with. It's an exercise that is talked about the world over known as the spider walk, but it's a specific version, you could say, of the spider walk that I feel like culminates, because there's so many different ways to play the spider walk. There's like the drunken spider walk, the spider hop, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to go about it. But to me, this culminates uh, all of the benefits of the spider walk in just condensing it into one specific exercise. So if I'm in a situation where I don't necessarily have the time to drill all the different types of spider walk exercises, right? Which I do still do to this day, uh, to, you know, keep my hands warmed up and everything. This one particular exercise will do in a pinch better than all the rest. I like to call it the spider shortcut, and it goes like this. So what's so special about this spider shortcut? Well, the main thing about it, as opposed to the other spider walk exercises, is that it traverses the fretboard much quicker than if you were to just go up all six strings moving one fret at a time. Like I'd have to do this for a while before I got over here, which I you know, would have already been there and back had I done the spider shortcut. Now it's not a race, that's not what it's about, but it's the fact that it traverses the fretboard in a methodical, relatively quick way and back so that you're working through this spider walk exercise while dynamically dealing with the changing sort of terrain of the fretboard, like the frets getting closer together, right? You know, because it's a little bit different to play up here than it is over here. You may not notice it if you're already used to it, but in the beginning, you know, the, the, having the, the, the fret wire so far apart over here feels a little bit different than if you're playing it up here. And especially if you're playing it further up the fretboard, you have to have more precision because you have less space to work with, less vibration. All that stuff matters, you know, whether you know it or not. So the point of this exercise, as opposed to the rest of the spider walk exercises, which are more or less just like, go as far as you can up the fretboard, you know, and that's pretty much it. This one has a specific A and B destination, right? And you're starting from A, ending up in B, and then you're going back to A. So like I said, in a pinch, this one exercise, in my opinion, is much more effective than all the other spider walk exercises combined. Especially if you're pressed for time. I mean, this is one of those exercises that takes like a minute to do, and it warms you up just the same. So let's break down what's actually happening. So it starts off exactly like a normal spider walk exercise for the first four frets, right? And if you don't already know, the way you wanna go about this exercise when it comes to your fretting is you don't wanna do this, where you're exerting all this motion that's really unnecessary. You wanna keep the motion minimal, so you're just going. It's like when you play that first fret, pretend like you just super glued it to the fretboard. Then you play the next fret, you just super glued that to the fretboard, you super glued that one, and then, then that one. So you're holding this position. What it's doing is it's actually building dexterity and stretchability in your hand, especially because you're dealing with the first four frets, which are the widest compared to the rest of the fretboard. So sometimes to avoid that, you know, the, 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 that feeling of your hand being stretched out, a lot of players will do this. You know, especially if you're just getting to know this exercise. But you don't want to do that. That actually can set up some pretty bad habits in the future. You want to focus on economy of motion. So you're going to do it this way throughout this whole exercise. What happens next, this is where it starts to change, is we're going to move to the A string, but we're going to move a fret up. So when we go a string down, we go a fret up. So now, from one, two, three, four on the low E, we moved a string down and a fret up. So we're doing two, three, four, five. And notice how I'm doing the same thing, right? The same economy of motion. Super glue, super glue, super glue, super glue. <laughs> Say that five times fast. I could barely do it four times fast. Uh, and then what we're gonna do next, one string down, one fret over. So we're doing three, four, five, six. All right, noticing the pattern here, and essentially just keeps up. One string down, one fret over. 
All right, so here we're at four, five, six, seven. And then one string down, one fret over, five, six, seven, eight. One string down, one fret over, and we're doing six, seven, eight, nine. Now, before we get into the second half of this, how you're going to walk through these, you know, going down the strings like this. So let's say we do that first, uh, that first uh, string, the low E string. Now that our pinky is here, we can unglue our first finger and then bring it right into position for the next move, for the next string, right? Bring it over. So that you're still keeping up that economy of motion, right? You're not going like this, you know, which is like very problematic where you can actually end up not picking the right notes and it's, it's really sloppy. So it actually, it may seem counterintuitive, but it's not. The less movement you employ, the more accurate you're gonna be. So you do those first four frets, then you bring that first finger over, right? So as soon as your pinky is glued, that's when it's time for your first finger to unglue and make the next move. Because you want there to be no dead space. You don't want it to take too long going through the strings. You want it to be a steady flow like this. Now, once we get to the high E string, this is where it's gonna change up a little bit. We're going to move, you know, one string down and one fret over still. So we're now starting on the seventh fret here on the B string, we're going seven, eight, nine, 10. And then we're going up a string and then over a fret, starting on eight, nine, 10, 11. Up a string, over a fret, right? Nine, 10, 11, 12. Up a string, over a fret, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. Up a string over a fret, 11, 12, 13, 14. This is where it's gonna get weird because you are essentially like, what you're getting back to the wound strings, it's gonna feel a little bit awkward here, but that's especially why it's important to hold that position with your hand so that you're gluing those fingers to the fretboard momentarily, right? To build that dexterity. It's almost like you're stretching while you're exercising, you know? Now what happens next, we've reached from point A to point B, now we wanna get back to point A. So we're gonna do this backwards. We're gonna moonwalk the spider back down to that first fret on the low E string. So check it out. I mean, we've gone from the first fret here all the way up to the 14th fret just by way of this first, you know, ascending exercise. Now we're gonna descend. So once we hit here, we're immediately going to go backwards. So we're going 14, 13, 12, 11. All right, and as we go down a string, we're going a fret this way. And I remember when I was first learning this exercise, it was right around there when I really started tripping up and I'd have to stop and think about my next move, right? Because you wanna make sure that you know, you're holding that hand position and that you're going down a string over a fret because sometimes you'll skip a fret or you'll skip a string even, and it might happen. If that happens, don't get frustrated. This is all just part of learning new things, right? You're going to, uh, you know, you're gonna learn to walk before you learn to run. So, or in this case, you can think you're gonna learn to uh, uh, crawl before you learn to walk. So you're gonna, you know, slow down, police yourself. If you're not playing it to a metronome, just really take it one note at a time. And of course, you wanna get yourself playing it to a metronome so that you're able to play each note evenly. But just stop and think, just, okay, I'm up here. Just really take your time, even if it's painfully slow, even if it's much slower than this. Just to make sure that you're moving in the right way. And if you happen to slip up, my recommendation, which this is kind of like, you know, this is where a little bit of the, the practice discipline comes in. But if you mess up, start it over, right? You don't have to start the entire thing over, but let's say start from this position. If this is where you start to trip up like I did, just start it over, just be like, okay, coming back. Let's do this again. And once we make it here to the high E string, we're going to now be, continue to go, you know, up strings and down frets, right? So we're here, the sixth fret of the high E string. So our pinky is gonna grab the, what we're leading with, right, is our pinky now. So our pinky is now gonna grab the uh, eighth fret here, eight, seven, six, five. And then, so we're doing the inverse, right? Remember where we, would leave off with one finger, then start with the next finger. In this case now, it's leaving off with the index finger and then, and then uh, um, starting off with the pinky. And if you stick to that one fret over, one string down, right? And then one fret over, one string up, that whole thing, like uh, one string, one fret, 
right? As far as that, that movement goes, you're gonna end up right where you started, which is the first fret on the low E string. Now, if you find yourself in a different position, let's say you've brought your way down and now you've landed on the uh, second fret, or maybe you have an open string or something, and that tells you that it's at some point during the shortcut, there was a little bit of a misstep, and that's where you wanna start over. You want to uh, uh, work this exercise enough to where you can play it perfectly, right? Or at least just cleanly and smoothly, even if it's painfully slow in the beginning, from point A to point B, back to point A. Once you're there, then you can consider yourself completing it, and you can now work to up the BPM if you're practicing it to a metronome, right? I like to follow the rule of increments of five BPM. So if you're starting at like 40, right, really slow, then you can bump it up to 45 and then 50 and then so on and so on. Hey, by the way, if you're getting some value out of this lesson, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Not only does it really help us out, but it lets us know that you like these lessons and you'd like to see more of them. And believe me, we would love to give you more. So thanks in advance and let's get back to business. So that's the exercise as far as the fretting hand is concerned. Now what your picking hand is gonna be doing is obviously alternate picking. That's just the best way to do it. And it's a great exercise for practicing alternate picking just like the regular spider walk is, right? But another thing you can do, if it makes it a little bit easier, actually, to give you more time to think about your next move, is you can double pick each individual note. So you can go. So you're taking less time, right? You're, you're not having to immediately, like, there's one move, you know, and you gotta keep each individual move going. When you're double picking, it basically doubles the time but it, it turns out it's a lot more beneficial for your picking hand, right? Especially for that alternate picking. And if you, and if practicing this exercise, you know, the intent is building speed, which is absolutely can work for. You can uh, lighten the grip of your pick. That'll make the picking go a lot smoother. If you're having a firm grip on it and you're, and you're really tense, you're more likely to trip over strings or to like hit a string you don't intend to. It really doesn't require more tension when you're playing faster, which again, seems counterintuitive, but it's not. This was really another life-changing thing that I was told a long time ago that completely changed the way I like picked fast was to just loosen the grip of my pick. Not enough to let it fall out of my hand, but just enough to like make it to where when I'm tremolo picking, right? That economy of motion, right? Which was what we talked about with the fretting hand is just as relevant for the picking hand. Now, even with this exercise being as effective as it is, there are modifications you can make to it to even increase the versatility of how effective it is. Like for example, you know how with the spider walk, you have like the drunken spider walk and the spider hop and all that stuff. You can actually apply that with this spider shortcut. Because again, the main benefit is the fact that you're traversing the fretboard and experiencing different terrains of the fretboard, right, all in one go. Now, if you wanted to apply the same spider shortcut with the drunken spider walk, make this a drunken spider shortcut, you can do that too. Right? It's a lot harder. In fact, I, I, <laughs> I'd probably have to start a lot slower than I normally do with the typical linear spider walk uh, movement if I were to do that, you know. But there's no rule saying you, you can't. In fact, if you really want to, and if you have the ability to, like, you know, add some more intensity to your practice routine, I can't think of a better way to do it than that. And I mean, you can apply the double picking too to the drunken spider shortcut, you know? So this exercise has so many uses, right? It can work for building speed, you know, it can work for just like covering the fretboard, like I said, right? Um, uh, so that you're playing notes just as competently here as you are here and vice versa. So it's just one of those end all be all exercises that, you know, if I was in a situation where I only had a minute to warm up, let's say if I'm backstage for a show or something, which if I get the chance to be in a green room with my guitar, I'm generally running this exercise. Like this will be all day long, every day, the exercise I would select to do. You could say it's my desert island guitar exercise if you wanna put it that way. <laughs> just remember when you're practicing this, start slow. Even if it's painfully slow, it's okay. In the beginning, this is just part of the process, all right? What you don't want to do is get overly ambitious and try to blow past the very important fundamentals that you're going to be building by doing this slow. Think of it this way. You're going to have to do it slow regardless, so might as well get it all over with 
so that you're past that point and then you're only going upwards from there. So there you have it. That's the guitar exercise that changed my life and I hope it will do the same for you because this is one of those exercises that I do use to this day and will continue to use for years to come. But when you build all that power in your hands from this exercise, right, with great power comes great responsibility. So what are you gonna do next? Stop, you don't even need to think about it. I already know the answer for you. It is this right here. This is that free gift I was telling you about, remember? This is the fretboard conveyor belt. It's a system that I've developed over years of frustration that has helped thousands of guitar players online learn how to navigate the fretboard with comfort and confidence. So taking what you learned with this exercise and really putting it to work when it comes to music. So be sure to click here to claim that copy or check the link in the description box. There are certain things that you will learn in your guitar playing journey that you'll just never outgrow because they're gonna continue to be relevant to you no matter what level you're at. This exercise that we just learned is definitely one of them.